When you look at the offense in particular, you're bringing back almost everybody except a, a couple of offensive linemen. And then, and, and you know, Treshawn Ward left and, you know, a couple other role players left. But you're bringing back everybody else and then you're bringing in some elite talent to join them. I don't know, man. You start kind of getting excited about what this offense could be. It, it was really good last year. But how much better could it be with, with improved talent, at, at particularly tight end? Well, they averaged what they averaged like 36 a game last year, something like that, 36, 37. I, again, I bring up the fact that I would like them to go even a little quicker. They they should be one of the top five or 10 offenses in the United States, considering, like you said, what they did last year. I mean, they were putting up 40 on everyone at the end of the year. Put should have put up, put up close to 40 against Clemson if they convert a fourth down near the red zone or, or near the goal line. Um, and uh, so, and then you're bringing Jeremiah Byers and Morlock and Jaheim Bell in. You're, you're better at tight end. You might be better on the offensive line. We don't know. You're going to be probably as good. Your quarterback, everybody else, should be even better because they're a year older and, and a year longer in the system. You're looking at, what, 40 points a game? Like, that's a realistic goal and maybe a probable goal with the way they played to finish last season. But I feel like I, the, the one thing that I didn't like is, like, the Wake Forest game. They I think they had four possessions in the first half, something like that. Like, I just think when you have this good of offense, maybe you do – speed it up just a little bit to make sure you get one extra possession a half. It depends on if your defense is getting stops or not, because I think they're going to want to play sure. complimentary football to a varying degree. They weren't getting stops, and they couldn't move the ball. It was frustrating. That was part of that three-game stretch where we all look back and go, man, they weren't quite realized yet. They were something different after that. Now, part of that was they got better, learned from their mistakes, played to their strengths, but also the rest of the schedule was pretty weak until they got to that Ford offense, which was a good offense, and it moved the ball pretty easily on them, and then Oklahoma did as well. So it will be interesting to see how much better the defense is because I think they will, Corey, play faster, to your point, if there's more trust and there's evidence that that defense can get more stops against good offenses. Yeah, and I think the – the the and we just wrote about it on the site. We talked about it yesterday on your show. The improvement they made on the defensive line, uh, you know, bringing in – I guess that's three transfers now, Daryl Jackson, Braden Fisk, Gilbert Edmond, who we spoke to today, the defensive end from uh, South Carolina. Along. Where else could he be from, Ira? They're all <laughs> yeah. from South Carolina, yeah. buddy. We don't yeah. even have to say it anymore. That pipeline, that tried and true <laughs> pipeline from Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, but, you know, the improvement they've made there, along with the guys you're bringing back, you, your two best defensive linemen, two guys that, uh, you know, six months ago we thought were both going to be in the NFL at this point or preparing for the NFL at this point, Jared Verse and Fabian Lovett both decided to come back. Then you add them with these new pieces with some of the younger linemen we like. That's going to be the biggest difference. I know there's a lot of questions about, okay, who's going to start in the secondary this year with Jamie leaving and who's going to start at, you know, are, are they going to make an improvement at linebacker? But it all starts up front. We, we know that. We see that in every college football team that's successful. You have to be great up front. And I think they're, they've got a chance to be better than what we saw last year, especially because they just held so many injuries last yeah. season. Think about what their defensive line was against Louisville. Uh, I don't think I'm pronouncing that right, but I'm trying, gang. Louisville, Louisville, I, I don't know. It's Louisville. Kentucky. Louisville, Louisville. That's where they make the log of a little. Is, it, <laughs> is that Louisville? Is that a Louisville bourbon? Um, exactly. It's not. But uh, Fabian Lovett didn't play. Uh, Jared Verse got hurt very early in that game. Patrick Payton's getting his first real reps. Joshua Farmer's playing a ton. Malcolm Ray is Malcolm Ray. Derek McClendon is Derek McClendon. They're solid college football players, but they're not special. I think we can agree on that. But they're they're good enough. They're good enough to be in a rotation. And now you juxtapose that with who you're starting against LSU. You, you Daryl Jackson might be a second teamer. Like Daryl Jackson would have been your start a starter, I think, last year, especially with Cooper being hurt for most of the year. Now you got Fisk, love it. Daryl Jackson, Patrick Payton's a year older. Jared Verse might be the best defensive end in the country. Derek McClendon is serviceable. And then you have these younger guys coming up that might be pretty darn Dennis good. We'll Briggs. see. That just yeah. The Briggs. defensive well, line yeah. might be like legitimately very, very good. And last year, I think on the whole, even though it had a couple of big names, Fabian didn't play most of the season, it was at best average. And now your defensive line is going to be probably pretty darn good. That's a huge deal. Yeah, and I was making that point last year. I'm like, man, compared to the elite teams, the ones that you're trying to catch and surpass and be better than, Florida State's defensive line was not in the ballpark. They were not a Georgia or you know any of the best defensive lines we saw. Uh, but they have a chance to be closer to that this upcoming year. I think that is absolutely true, uh, and I'm excited about it because of what it can do for those linebackers. 
Uh, and I do think they've upgraded their ability to let guys play all out. The practice, the intensity, the reps, everything changes now that there's real competition and a depth of talent that they haven't had without question. This could be a much better defense. Well, yeah. It has to be, though, because there's a lot of pressure on that side of the ball as you're striving to try to win championships. Yeah, if you're only good on offense, no matter how good you are on offense, you're always going to be going down to the wire. The the thing I'd say though about what you know, Corey mentioned the Louisville game. Not only was Josh Farmer thrown into a big role, but it was really the first time he had been thrown into a big role. And Adam Fuller made the comment a few times later, which I appreciated him saying because when we watched that game, I remember watching that game thinking, "This is not the guy we expected to see." Like we've all been waiting for Josh Farmer to get an opportunity yeah, like this, yeah. and this isn't what we expected. And Adam Fuller said two or three times later in the year that when we put him out there against Louisville, we were like, who is this? Like, he wasn't himself. Like, he he didn't play the way he had practiced. He he was kind of overwhelmed, overwhelmed yeah. by the situation. So now you, again, he's much better than he looked in that game. Not only did you not have some of your best players, but the guys who were thrust into action didn't rise to that moment the way they did later in the year. So, yeah, I just think the linebackers, I'm curious what you guys think. I, I talked about uh, to Tom about this a little bit uh, during the smash. How much better might these linebackers be if that defensive front is this much better? Yeah, they're clean. They have a chance to to run sideline to sideline and play clean. And, and we know Tatum Bethune has very good instincts. His tackle numbers tell yeah. you that. Uh, he triggers. He's not a special athlete at the position. Uh, but obviously, all linebackers are a lot better when they're not having to deal with guys getting to the second level. And I think he's good enough to have a, a much better season if he's cleaner. Uh, I think that's true of Deloach. I think, hell, let's see what the freshman is. He's got the body type to be a really good player pretty early in his career, I think. He's a two-way player, Nicholson. Let's see if he can get on the field and provide meaningful reps. You're not going to put the onus on him to be the leader of that linebacking core in his freshman season, but I do think he's built a little different and has a chance to play some meaningful snaps for you so you can have some depth there quality depth at that. And if all those guys, every one of those linebackers will tell you if they have an opportunity to run free, all they have to do is diagnose when they get to the spot. Um, you know, they're physical enough to make those plays. And they're not special at linebacker, and they won't be even if that defensive line's better. But could they be uh, appreciably better where we're all noticing that they make more plays? Hell yes, with a better defensive line. Yes. And there's a chance, maybe, again, we don't know what Braden Fisk is. We just know everybody wanted him. Uh, he might be awesome. He might be a monster. Uh, there's a chance they're special on the defensive line if they stay healthy. If Patrick Payton takes another leap to go along with your first-round pick on the other side, and then you have Fabian Lovett and Braden Fisk and Daryl Jackson and other guys in the middle, that's a chance to be a special defensive line. And if you're special at the defensive line and you're special at quarterback, and just have a really good offense in general, you got a shot to do some things. But I wanted to say, like, when it go, comes back to the defensive line, I'm really interested in the development of Lions and Tafasi because there, I think there's real competition here, man. I think there's real competition to get on the field with Farmer, Tafasi, Lions, these younger guys, and these the older veteran guys. Um, you know, it's not going to be easy to get on the field, but it should raise their, I, as I used to say, I, I used to tell you this back in Thomasville, a rising tide lifts all boats. And I feel like if the whole defensive line is playing to this level and the only way you can get on the field is to get much, much better, that's only going to help uh, those young guys play better because they see it. They're going to see it every day in practice what a good defensive tackle looks like. I picture Ira on the drive home after having dropped Corey off with that sage advice. <laughs> Just repeatedly in his head, thinking about what that means, mm. how it can help him in his life, you know, at the red re light. Reflect know. on it all the time. All the time. It, was, it must have been a special moment. Were you at, like, Hardy's? What were you no. guys doing? I were think you we were at George and Louis, right, I wrote <laughs> at the Thomasville Staple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just wondering when you uttered it, where you guys – I bet Ira knows for sure. But I'm just saying, like, in that moment, wow. And then we couldn't have known it, but years later, iron sharpens iron. I mean, what are the odds that the same person would come up with both of those? This is crazy. It's like, it's like uh, I mean, probably George and Ringo would sit around talking about the things that Lennon and uh, McCartney came up with. They're just like, how did, how did they come up with those songs? And then we sit here and we get to listen to Corey Clark. Well, I always thought Corey, underneath your avatar on Twitter, should be one of those great original Thoughts. of yours, yeah, you know that's a, that's a thought. That's a thought. I, I I just wish you know, looking in hindsight, uh, maybe copyright them. I don't know. It seems like they get used an awful lot without my permission, but whatever. 